when you get to the size that JB is, especially when you, you have lost so much of your freedom and your mobility to not at all think that there is any part, any part of it is your doing things that you are choosing to do. And it's everything else. Like, yes, all of those things I believe play a role into it. But all of those things are not making someone to the point where they cannot walk around a grocery store and go shopping, right? Alrighty, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Jay Bay once again. Uh, we, we talked about her relatively recently. If you're not familiar, Jay Bay is a uh, plus size influencer that does a lot of videos basically they're kind of their almost their whole page is dedicated to plus size travel and they have had quite a few different experiences that weren't the greatest that they have made a lot of tiktoks kind of talking about um, most recently we talked about an experience they had at the airport where they claimed that basically a uh, an attendant at the airport refused to push them in a wheelchair and made them walk and they were wheezing and their lips turned blue and they felt like they were about to pass out and it was this really terrible experience and they made a whole video about that um and so and even before that they had a whole um kind of whole campaign trying to get people to sign um this petition to you know make airports and stuff like that more accessible um so that was kind of the first thing and then that thing that we just talked about happened and then now these things are happening and so what am i talking about well we are going to be talking about uh this um this TikTok, um mostly um and this was this was uploaded real pretty recently about three days ago um and they kind of share another bad experience that they claim that they had at uh chicago o'hare airport um so without further ado i'll kind of let her um just kind of share her experience Recently, I had a distressing experience at Chicago O'Hare Airport. As a plus-size ambulatory wheelchair user, I faced a significant challenge when trying to get to baggage claim. The only option was to go through a revolving door. We pressed the button to slow it down for people with disabilities, but as soon as we entered, we got stuck. I'm claustrophobic and began to panic, frantically motioning to the staff for help. They just stared at me, offering no assistance. So basically claiming that the the staff at the airport saw that she was, she, she and I'm assuming it's her fiance that she's, she's speaking about, uh, were stuck and they just were laughing and snickering and decided not to do anything. I'm going to be completely honest. Like at this point, I just don't, <laughs> I just don't, I really don't believe that this is happening. Um, again, that's just my opinion. Because it is too perfect that someone whose entire social media presence is about plus size travel is having these crazy experiences and then of course making videos about that. And then on top of it, with the amount that she films, um, she films herself walking into the airport, walking it down the aisles. All, she's always filming herself doing these things at, air, at airports specifically, right? Like so many videos at airports specifically. And there is never video about these things that are happening, especially the last one where she was talking about how like it was this long drawn out thing that happened. I don't understand why she wouldn't film that, right? If that's such a huge thing that is, you know, that happens and it was this huge thing that took forever and it was happening over a long period of time. Why would you not like, especially clearly she cares about content. Clearly she cares about filming this stuff. Why would she not film that? Right? So at this point I just, I, I feel bad saying it, but I just don't believe what she's saying. <laughs> a passerby noticed our struggle and tried to help, but the airport staff remained unresponsive. This was my second terrible experience at O'Hare during just one trip. The so again, and this is what I said in my last video, I think it's, it's interesting that if these things actually happened, I think because, and this is the danger in my opinion of um, like getting really entrenched in health at every size and making your entire, making your entire online persona and per personality about being, you know, plus size is that it's almost impossible to have this type of experience and think to yourself, maybe there's like, maybe I need to make some changes because this, like not being able to walk, you know, the first video that we talked about in the past, not being able to walk down an airport, you know, runway or whatever, um, that should be a sign that, hey, like there's something going on. Like there's like some change that needs to happen. And the dangers of health at every size is that there, there's just this prevalent feeling of that it's impossible to lose weight, right? Being, being 
so overweight that you are now disabled, right? Which is what she claims. That is the same as someone being disabled because they got into an accident or what they were born without, you know, functioning limbs. And that's dangerous in my opinion, because there is change that can be made there. Like J Bay is not in a position where she can't do anything about her weight. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what the, all the people in the health at every size place say, you know, they all, oh, it's impossible. It's a, you know, only 1% or only 2% or only 5%. It's not impossible. Like I know plenty of people. I'm one of them. That was, I was about as big as J Bay was maybe even a little bit bigger. And I've been able to lose the weight. I've been able to keep it off for 10 plus years now. And so to say that it's impossible is just BS in my opinion. I just don't believe it. And it's frustrating because there's so many people that are just like co-signing this kind of thinking. And it's like, if you believe differently, you're labeled as some sort of like X fat or you hate fat people. I don't hate fat people, but I understand that I don't, I understand that that experience was probably traumatizing and fair enough, but you can make a difference. You can make a change in your life, right? JB, like there is, you have the power to do that regardless of how long you felt like you don't. It takes that one step moving forward, making better decisions. And I know that, I know that this, this kind of video actually trying to speak to J Bay, she's never going to listen to anything I have to say. And that's fine. This video isn't to help her out because I understand she's not going to listen to me, but it's for the people that maybe were in that position for a while. And they were starting to think that that's how they were going to feel. And now they see that that isn't the case anymore. The lack of assistance was not only frustrating but dehumanizing, highlighting the necessity for airport staff to treat travelers of all sizes and abilities with the respect and care they deserve. And it's just like, again, even going back to the previous video that we talked about, like her expecting someone to be able to push her, like you can't expect someone that's working in an airport, everyone to be able to push someone that weighs over 300 or more pounds, right? I think that that's just a little just it's not realistic right this next video here does a really good job of basically showing the explanation and the way that she feels about weight-based discrimination is the same as being discriminated against because of your you know your race or being actually disabled or anything like that right so like i say that a lot and i feel like maybe people haven't seen that but this video is literally her basically making that claim right Killis comment claiming discrimination is only about race religion or sex not weight seriously Let's set the record straight about weight-based discrimination. Discrimination is the unjust or prejudicial treatment of different categories of people, especially on the grounds of ethnicity. I just think that, I, I'm just thinking about the fact that, that she just had a phone pointed at her this entire time. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of funny to me. Age, sex, disability, and, or, wait for it, wait. Weight-based discrimination or weight stigma is the discriminatory treatment of people based on their size and weight. It can lead to exclusion, marginalization, and inequities. Newsflash! Weight isn't just about eating habits, genetics, metabolism, mental health, and money play big roles. Blaming it all on overeating. That's ignorant. Yeah, I think that there's, this is where I get so, I get frustrated because it feels like, because those are things that play a role into it, but, I'm sorry, but like no one, when you get to the size that JB is, especially when you, you have lost so much of your freedom and your mobility to not at all think that there is any part, any part of it is your doing things that you are choosing to do. And it's everything else. Like, yes, all of those things I believe play a role into it. But all of those things are not making someone to a point where they cannot walk around a grocery store and go shopping, right? There's a difference there. There's a difference there. I'm sorry, maybe you disagree with me, but there is a difference there. Like those things matter 100%, but you have to take some responsibility. You have to take some responsibility and look at where you are in your life. Are you happy with the things that you are able to do and the things that you're not able to do? And really think to yourself, is there something I can do about changing this? And I think the most dangerous part about health at every size, fat acceptance, is they have tricked people into believing there is nothing you can do about it. You are the way you are and it's not your fault. It has nothing to do with what you've done and it's everyone else's fault and they need to fix themselves because 
you're completely fine and there's nothing wrong with you. When we know being significantly overweight to the size that JB is where you are not able to move freely has a huge detriment onto your health. FYI, some states and cities actually have laws against weight-based discrimination. There are also advocacy groups out there fighting for more protections. Weight-based discrimination often intersects with other biases. Imagine being judged for your race and weight at the same time. It amplifies the impact and makes life even harder for those already facing multiple forms of discrimination. Weight-based discrimination is real and harmful. So instead of spreading misinformation, educate yourself, Google is free, and remember, ignorance isn't bliss, it's just lazy. So again, I've kind of said everything that I need to say about that video. And then this is a video talking about the first experience, right? Getting stuck into the, the rotating door and she's kind of says some stuff about it and I think there's some interesting points here. This was right before the incident I'm about to tell you about. On the first leg of the trip, the wheelchair assistance completely failed us. I was left struggling to be okay. There is a video about the incident on my page. That experience was already stressful and humiliating enough. So by the time it was time to fly home, I decided to have my fiance push me in the wheelchair to avoid any more mishaps. I, so hearing that, like your fiance is with you, why would they not always decide to push you? Like, I don't, that, that makes no sense to me. You have someone that is able-bodied, that's walking, that can push you. Why would you opt to have someone else do it when there is someone there that can do it, that is m much more comfortable with you? You're probably, I would assume, much more comfortable with them. Why would you put it on someone else to push you down? I, I don't, I don't understand that at all. When I, when I saw that, I was like, that is crazy. If you have the option of always having your fiance there, why would, like, if I was with someone, I would always choose to push them. I would not expect, I don't know, man, maybe I don't understand it, but that is insane to me. Like, honestly, I don't understand how you could just not always have the person that's with you all the time push you. That's going to be more comfortable. You're going to be more comfortable with them. You know you're going to be safe. They know how everything works. Like, I don't, I just don't get it. Sure this, me, a plus size woman in a wheelchair, pushing my suitcase with one hand while my fiance did their best to steer. It wasn't the easiest setup but we were managing as we were making our way through the terminal. Again, it's like <laughs> that experience for most people is like, man, I really like there has to be a change because regardless, regardless of how accessible things become, you're not going to magically be able to walk. It's not magically going to be easier to navigate through a, an airport. Unless it's like it turns into Wally and you get a floating, you know, pod that just takes you everywhere. I personally don't want to go down that road. Um, but like, I don't understand how you don't have the experience and not think at least a little bit like, man, there's like, there's some changes that I need to make, right? Instead, it's like, this needs to change. They need to change this. They need to change this. They need to change this. They need to change this because they need to figure things out for me. That's the way that it feels. And I don't understand how she doesn't see that. How she doesn't see how just like self-entitled this whole thing feels. We walked by a group of flight attendants. At first, I thought nothing of it. But then, I heard the unmistakable sound of laughter. Directed right at us. So that, that type of thinking shows me that she is embarrassed of herself. And there is a, a form of, like, she does feel embarrassed about her size, regardless of how much she tries to maybe act like she's not. Because I remember feeling that same exact way. Every time I walked into a room, if people were laughing, I assumed it was about me. Was it always about me? No, definitely not, right? But that was a feeling that I had. And that feeling made me uncomfortable, and it was one of the things that, one of the catalysts of the change that I made, right? And so I just, it's so interesting seeing someone have all these very similar feelings that I had. And instead of being like, yeah, you know what? I need to make a change. It's like, you know what? Everyone else needs to change around me and, and be, oh, be nice to me. Or like, you know, literally change how an airport is built for me. They didn't even try to hide it. They pointed, laughed, and made snide remarks. And one said, what the actual fuck? My heart sank. The sting of their mockery was intense. It's one thing to deal with stares and whispers, but outright laughter and public humiliation. It was too much. Nobody should be treated like this. 
Read the caption for more. So what the caption says, the caption says, as a fat person, I'm used to people making assumptions and passing judgment. Comes with the territory, unfortunately, but just because I know what to expect doesn't mean it hurts any less when it happens. We all deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, no matter what the size or circumstance. So to those flight attendants, if by some chance you see this, remember that your words and actions have impact. A little kindness and understanding goes a long way and everybody watching this let's support each other and lift each other up especially in moments of vulnerability so again just to kind of reiterate everything that i've said that's kind of everything that's happened i i am just not convinced that these things are actually truly happening and if they are i am flabbergasted flabbergasted that there is there's no like you know what maybe there's some changes i need to make because this thing keep, keeps happening she loves traveling she always talks about how travel is a huge thing for her she loves to travel loves to travel that's a huge part of of her life and having these terrible experiences that could be mitigated and made easier if you just took some steps to change your own life right instead of just believing that it is impossible i think that's the most dangerous thing about health at every size and fat acceptance in my opinion i would love to know what y'all think down in the comment section down below Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.